to the place where I belong. A place of power, a place of signs and wonder. That is where I belong in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, musicians. God bless you. This month, you can have your seat. Those of you online, I pray the blessings of God over you. That this will be your best week ever. It will be an endless miracle for you. And those of you here, same for you, same for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, based on what the church has been saying, we have been doing a lot of teaching. Uh, this is our season of stability. That God is going to help his people to become very stable and to be stable. Uh, it said, but the stability of our time will become wisdom and knowledge. Isaiah 63, Isaiah 33, verse 6. It's the wisdom and knowledge and the strength of thy salvation will be the fear of the lost treasure. Uh, so based on that, we have been covering what is stability. We have those messages. Also, we had about nine, uh, eight messages all put together for about five hours. Some of you have received that message already that you can listen to for a long period of time. And we thank the Lord for that powerful eight, uh, five hours message eight messages all together. Some, uh, some of the messages are um, 23 um, messages. Some are longer than that. And uh, some of the outlines I have here just to share with us so that we remember what the Lord is doing in this season for us. We have some of the topic here and um, some of just to note some of the things that are in that eight messages. If you do need that eight message, you want to connect. We talked about tried by fire and the unyielding spirit, uh, talking about the spirit that never gives up. And we use Job as an example, men like Paul as a case study. Also, number two message is there, message there is about the miracle of the anointing oil, divine fragrance. The message, that message is about the anointing oil, and that's number two. Some apostles and prophets determine that they didn't listen to that, and they love it, they like it. The number three message on that session is, um, number three is the hand of God, and that is extremely important. Those are the hand of God was upon uh, demonstrating biblical account of those that had a positive outcome. The first message actually tried by fire. Those guys that was tried by fire, some of them did have positive outcome. But many of them did lose, for example. They gained some, but they lost some, right? For example, when you're talking about restoration of Job's family. If his son or his daughter did die, they did die. So what is left for them is that you had another child. But even though you have another child, how many of you know you still remember your losses of the other child? Praise God. Amen. Even though God gave you two more, three more, four more, twelve more, you still remember the six that you lost. Did somebody catch that? So even though that kind of restoration is quite interesting, the way to look at it. All right. Then we also have... Um, so we have those people that had positive outcome is number three. The hand of God was upon them. They had positive outcome. Then number four is about the voice of God, listening to the divine whisper. That was a, such a powerful message. Number five was about speaking in tongues. Um, the purpose of the second message about the anointing oil is because too many in the body of Christ are anointing themselves but don't know what they are doing. So that message is to help you to know what you are doing when you are anointing yourself. And scriptures to back up why you should anoint yourself. All right. Still also here, speaking in tongues, giving a lot of points. I think we gave about 30 points about speaking in tongues, or if not 30, maybe 10. Uh, expanding on that, number five messages on that session. Uh, number six, uh, divine healing. There you're going to have some powerful scriptures that will help you with it. divine healing if you are looking for healing. Then number seven, the unshakable foundation. What is stability? Who is stability? Uh, who is our stability? God, 
Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Then we'll talk about the word of God. We'll talk about prayer. Uh, we listed some powerful things on who, what, when, and how. We did the why also on our story. No, we did not do the when. We just did the why. All right. Uh, unshakable foundation. How to have unshakable foundation. Number is just to know where your stability is coming from. If you think it's from a human being, even though God used that human being as a source, then you are not paying attention to God's will. Amen. Number eight, how to navigate the storms of life. Amen. And addressing challenging issues and issues that hinders you. So that's the eighth message there. Then after that, since then, we have looked at um, some few messages more. Um, prioritizing assignments, um, the purpose of life. That's another powerful message. How to, to make your assignments to be the priority of your life and not the enjoyment of your life. Some people are always thinking about how they can enjoy my life. I'm not enjoying my life. I'm not enjoying it. They don't always think the rich or the not so rich, they are so much enjoying their life. Because sometimes you're not enjoying your life because it's just mental. And sometimes it's, it's some other things, but sometimes it's mental. So if you think you're not enjoying your life because you don't have this, you don't have that, you'll find out that after you have those things. Have you ever noticed you want a new phone and you feel like you're missing out? But after using that phone for six months, you feel like I could have used my old phone. Uh, it happened all the time. It happened with cars also. Oh, you always love your car at the beginning, and you notice that people are looking at you. But after some few months, amen, you will forget to wash your car. So, so nobody's even looking at it because you forgot to wash it, and the car looked like it, it came out from a dust house. And, uh, and then it's, it's old now to you. Till the next one come. I guarantee you, if you just bought a car, the first month you wash it, it's going to go to the washer, nothing minimum four times that month. Amen? Inside and outside. What they say? You say, in, even though the inside is not yet dirty, the inside and outside. Amen? So that's just the way it works there. All right. So prioritizing your assignment, not your enjoyment of your life. So we cover that. Um, now, the contradiction to that scripture would be the book of Timothy when he says, Give us favor to enjoy. So some people may feel like if he give us this to enjoy, why is the prophet say the most important thing is our assignment and not our enjoyment? So we must be careful on that. Amen? All right. So the next message we did cover, if not, I will cover some more other ones, is uh, uh, Jesus, and which we're going to be covering here live this morning because we have not covered this. This is the five gifts of Jesus to, uh, to you and I, to the church, the five gifts. Uh, his divine blessings, five gifts he gave to us. So we're going to look at that. Then also the seven spirit of the Lord. Uh, what is the difference between the seven spirit of the Lord in comparison to um, the nine gifts of the of the Lord? The seven spirit of the Lord versus the nine gifts of the Lord. Then after that, we're going to be looking at uh, unveiling. We're going to be looking at unveiling. Uh, prophecy or the prophetic and the five-foot ministry in the modern church. All right. Looking at it from that angle. I don't think we're going to be able to cover all of this. But if there's anything I want to put in your spirit or drop in your spirit immediately, is the five gifts uh, from Jesus to the church. That is extremely important. So we're going to go straight to the point here. And we're going to start with number one. This is the gift of Jesus. Now, uh, as we take off, I want us just to be reminded that <laughs> when we talk about a gift, if somebody buy me a tie, for example, that tie is given to me as a gift, and a gift is a gift, right? So that tie is given to me as a gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's given to me as a gift. So every time I wear that tie, I can put it on, I can take it off. If somebody buys me a wristwatch, I can choose to put the wristwatch on, or I can choose to remove the wristwatch. It's a gift. So the same if somebody buys you a shoe and the rest of it. So we're talking about the gift of Jesus to his church, to the believer. We need to know that we are really talking about um, something that you did not work for. Something that was given to you as a present. All right, the first one is salvation. You did not work for it. Romans chapter 2 and verse 8, By grace ye are saved and not with your own power. 
It's Jesus that offer you salvation for free. Glory be to God. He offer you salvation for free. Now, most preachers will say, yes, he offered to you uh, for free, but you need to keep it. It's true. Amen? You need to keep it. But he's the one that is able to help you to keep it, too. Yeah, we can argue that, right? He gives you salvation. You need to keep the salvation. If you don't keep the salvation, you can lose it. I can buy you a wristwatch, and if you don't keep it, you lose the wristwatch. I can buy you a phone. If you're careless, you don't know where you drop the phone, and you can't find your phone no more. Does, is that making sense to us? All right, so yes, it's a gift. So yes, it's there. It's without repentance, but if you, if you lose it or you no more recognize it, remember, anything it is... Once you receive your cell phone and you do not know how to use it, you will find out that you need to go online to find out how to use your own cell phone. It's yours already, but you need to know how to use it and all the features in it. Amen? Um, those editing on those uh, audition, um, uh, the messages you've been seeing, I had always have for the past 10 years all the Adobe, for those of you that know Adobe, like for Photoshop, it's Adobe. For Audition, uh, Audition is the one used for music. Then you use uh, Profit. No, Profit is not a different. It's the one here. Your Premium and the rest of it. So Adobe have a suit where you have more than um, 12 different things or 13 different or 15 that they offer you. You pay one price as a business every month, and you have it all. So I always have everything we need. We've had it for over 10 years. Amen? We've always had what we need. But even though you have the suit, you don't know how to use everything in the suit. <laughs> Amen? So, but the day you need one, say, ah, there's an audio one there. Let me throw this record into this audio one and figure it by fire by force. Say, but you have not taken a class on this one. We'll figure it. We'll. Amen? Nobody taught me how to use it. And nobody taught me how to use also Final Cut Pro. We're just going to be finding it. We'll make many mistakes. And uh, at the end, we'll become very good. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why when I see. Now, some of you, you will see some, um, some pictures. And you say, oh, this picture, why did it look so nice? More than the other picture that is just regular picture. Sometimes now, the, the flyers you see, they were not made at, like from Photoshop alone. The flyers you see was done from a video. So when you're doing a video flyer and now send it out as a flyer, it has more uh, edge to it. You know, it, it has more. For example, uh, the flyer Greater Joy that you see on our on our Facebook, that is video. Nobody made that kind of flyer. It was a video software that created it, and it was now screenshot and thrown into Photoshop to get the right size for Facebook. Praise the Lord. So when you see, you say, wow, this is so unique. It's so, uh, the way it looks so uh, sharp. It's not fly, <laughs> it's not Photoshop. It was sent to Photoshop for completion, but it started with, you know, <laughs> a video, the, 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 the video one on that too, amen? There was a video software that made that. So a lot of big churches do that a lot. So if you do not know, you say, why is mine not coming out like this? First of all, you're using the wrong tools. <laughs> Amen? All right. So salvation carries a lot, but it's by grace. And yes, I believe Jesus is able to help you to keep it. Some people still believe that you cannot lose the gift, but because it's without repentance. But the point is that you have it as a believer. Amen? Number two. The Holy Spirit, that's John 14, 15. The Holy Spirit is a gift from the Father. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, and then he will be with you forever, forever. Somebody say, forever, forever. Be with you forever. So that's the promise of the Father. He'll give you another comforter. He'll give you a helper, amen, and I'll pray the Father. And I will, but take note, it's Jesus that is doing the praying, amen. So it's Jesus that sent you the Holy Spirit. Our God is a good God. Number three. The word of God. The word of God. Now here we are using the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. That say all scripture is given to us 
They begin to list for reproof, for doctrines, for correction, for training, for righteousness, uh, in righteousness. Amen. So here, again, all scripture given by Jesus. Now, during the time we did this message on our covenant call, we did try to see between salvation and the word of God, which one should come first, since we did put salvation. And the church did make the argument, the case, and the winners of the case was the, those that chose the word of God, the word of God before salvation. Amen? And I also joined the people that chose the word of God over salvation, even though I'm the one that said salvation. Amen? Now, the reason why we mostly put salvation at the beginning of this kind of message is the gift of the church because the Bible talks about we're dead in trespasses. So we believe that a dead man cannot understand. He's not able to deliver himself. You need Emmanuel. You need God inside of us to be able to start to defeat the enemy. Our spirit needs to be quickened. But then, one will also argue that, yes, you need to hear the word of God before even that spirit quickened that was dead. Do we see that? We need to hear the word of God before that spirit can quicken. We need to hear the word of God because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. So without the word, nothing was made that was made. So even salvation was created by the word of God. And again, now, we also remember that Jesus is the word. And if Jesus is the word, without Jesus, there's no salvation. And if salvation is dead, bring salvation to us. So you have to be born first before you now die, before you now have salvation. So the word is first. Amen? All right. We are flowing. Glory be to God. Now also, so that's a gift. The word of God is a gift. So every time you read the word of God, profit and profit and profit comes to you. Number four, I love this one, unity and fellowship. Unity and fellowship. Colossians chapter 12 and verse 12. Now, he began to communicate to us unity and fellowship. Some people forget unity in the body of Christ because everybody wants to be Methodist, everybody wants to be Catholic, some want to be Baptist, some are Pentecostal, some are interdenominational, and all these things we do. But no, it's one church, it's one Jesus Christ. That's why I'm all of the above. Praise God. Amen. So just as the body is one and has many members, the body is one, but has hands, legs, eyes, head, amen, and all the members of that one body, being, he said, being many, are one body. So also in Christ. We are all one body. So also in Christ. We are one body. We are not two bodies. Amen? We are one body. Now, this version here says, for just as the body is one and has many members. Is the body is one. Your nose, your eye. Amen? All the members of the body, though many, are one body. So many are one body. So it is with Christ. Amen? So it is with Christ. So Christ has many bodies. It reminds me of the teaching on the administrative of the gift and the operation. Diversities of operations and uh, um, different administration. Just like you have Obama administration is different from the other person's administration. If somebody catching the flow. Now, my favorite is number five, love and grace. It's a gift from Jesus. Love and grace. I know somebody may feel, Prophet, why didn't you put truth and grace? You know, that's very common in our church today. You know, made a little bit famous by uh, Trevor Dollar and, um, and also, I think, uh, Prince, Joseph Prince. Uh, they're very big on preaching uh, the truth and, and grace, or grace and truth. All right. But I'm going with love and grace. Amen? Uh, um, because you see, love is God. Amen? So love and grace. It's his love that is bringing the grace. Amen? You may think it's his truth that is bringing the grace. It's just like some people do not understand that the earth was not created because um, <laughs> God wants uh, somebody to die for our sins. The earth was created because a royal son cannot rule in the same territory as his father when his father will live forever in a kingdom concept, in a kingdom idea. He cannot. So you need another territory. So the reason for the earth is an extension of God's glory and not because he wants to save people. 
Amen. Because when we were born, we may even though we were conceived with sin, but that was not just go. Amen. All right. So, love and grace here, we're looking at the book of John 13, 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Amen. Just as I have loved you, you ought to love one another. Amen. Now, Jesus loved and gave his life. We love, but we don't want to give anything. We don't want to give anything. But we love them. We love them. We don't want to give anything. But Jesus loved and gave his life. That's the kind of love. Amen? He gave his life. It's just like when we're covering the aspect of forgiveness. Some people want to forgive you the way they want to forgive you and not the way God asked them to forgive you. God said you should forgive people the way he asked you to forgive people. And nothing brings sickness like lack of forgiveness. Somebody have done you so, Why am I sick? Why am I still feeling? Somebody have done you something. Amen. And this thing the person did is too painful. If it's not painful, you won't be sick. But if, if a person really hurts you, hmm, maybe the person is even dead. <laughs> That's the worst of it. The person that hurt you is dead. But you are still carrying the hurt. Some are carrying the hurt of their grandmother. You know, the hurt of the grandmother. But she's dead. 20 years now, you still have it. And you still treat people the way your grandmother treated you. You know, and you're still carrying it. That's how much that spirit is. It's a dangerous spirit. I pray for your deliverance in the name of Jesus. All right, so that's just the five gifts. Amen. We have it as salvation. We have number two as the Holy Spirit as a gift. We have number uh, three. As the word of God. Number four, we have it as uh, unity and fellowship. And number five, we have it as love and grace. Amen? Love and grace. Now, the second thing we are going to cover is going to be the nine gift of the Holy Spirit and comparing that, just supposing that with the seven gift of the, the, the Spirit of God, the seven Spirit of the Lord. The seven Spirit of the Lord. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and list this, but um, the most important thing for me when it comes to this, um, the gift of, the nine like gift of the Holy Spirit, is for you to be able to define it differently from the seven spirit of the Lord. Uh, most people do not understand it at all in the church. Now, while we're doing this teaching, we did do some few research and to see if somebody knows about the seven spirits. Few people know about the seven spirits. Now, some people just know about the seven spirits and teach it normally, but they don't really pay attention to the nitty-gritty of it. So, it's not going to be, it's going to be just be, we we'll list it, but I want to just show you how to know the difference between them. Because if you're not careful, you want to say, is he, uh, this one have knowledge here, the other one have knowledge. So, which knowledge are they talking about? Is it not all God one in one? Amen. Because the seven spirits of the Lord have knowledge. The gift have knowledge. The seven spirits of the Lord have spirit of wisdom. The gift also have gift of wisdom. You say, whether it's a gift or it's a spirit, who cares? I receive something. I receive some wisdom. <laughs> so, now you almost want to ask, which one did Solomon get? The gift of wisdom or the gift of <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen? All right. So, let's go ahead and... Um, covered the nine gifts of the Spirit, first of all. Just looking at the nine gifts of the Spirit. So in the nine gifts of the Spirit, the first one is word of wisdom. First Corinthians 12, 8. And that's word of wisdom. All right? I'm just going to list them. The second one is <coughs> word of knowledge. See, first Corinthians 12, 8. The third one is faith. This is now first uh, Corinthians 12, 9. The fourth one is the gift of healing, 1 Corinthians 12, 9 also. The fifth one is walking of miracle, 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And the sixth one is prophecy, and that is 1 Corinthians 12, 10. All right, the seventh one is designment of spirit, and that's 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And the, uh, the eighth one is diverse kinds of tongue, that is 1 Corinthians 12, 10. And the ninth one is interpretation of tongue, 1 Corinthians 12, 
uh, 10. So 12, 10, interpretation of tongue, 12, 10, diverse kinds of tongue, then designment of spirits, 12, 10, then um, prophecy, 12, 10. So from prophecy from 6, 7, 8, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4. From the ninth, from the fifth to the ninth one, which is four, you have all of them are in First Corinthians twelve ten. Then when you look at the rest, uh, from word of wisdom, word of knowledge, that is twelve ten, First Corinthians twelve ten, and then you have that's t- uh, First Corinthians twelve eight, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, tw- uh, First Corinthians twelve eight. Then you have faith and gift of healing. Those other two is uh, 9 and 9. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 9. 1 Corinthians 12, 9. Amen. Then from working of miracle, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. Is now verse 10. Verse 10 of the same 12. So all of them there. All right. Let's go to the seventh spirit of the Lord. The seven spirit of the Lord. That's gift. This is spirit. All right? Now, the fourth spirit of the Lord is the spirit of the Lord. The second is the spirit of wisdom. The third is the spirit of understanding. All right? All of this is in the book of Isaiah 11, 2. So we have the spirit of understanding. That's number three. We have the spirit of counsel. We have the spirit of mind. Number five. We have the spirit of the knowledge of God. Number six. We have the spirit of the fear of the Lord, number seven. Again, all this is in Isaiah 11 and verse two. So again, the spirit of the Lord, number one. Number two, the spirit of wisdom, number three. The spirit of understanding, number four. The spirit of cancer, number five. The spirit of mind, number six. The spirit of the spirit of knowledge. Number seven, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. All right? Now, so here... Most of the time, please, this is where you need to pay attention so that you can learn something uh, powerful. Most of the time, uh, a believer that have never really studied about the seven spirits of the Lord may have a problem. And this is the b- problem of the believer. He's thinking, why is it that they look alike? They look alike. I, I see spirit of wisdom in the, sp- in the seven spirit of the Lord. I see spirit of the knowledge of God, and then I go to the other side, I see gift of wisdom, I see gift of knowledge. So, they have the same thing, they kind of have the same thing. All right. Now, and again, even another one that can confuse a believer is this. Uh, Is it that um, the gift of might, is that the gift of faith? You see that kind of thing. That can also confuse somebody when you are just starting up. Your work with God. Uh, but this is it. Pay attention to it. It's very simple to get this answer. Immediately I say it, you're like, oh, aha. Uh-huh. But before, you were having problems. Because when I was very young in the faith, I'm talking about 15 years old, I was having problem with this. That's how I know you probably have a problem with it too. I like they look alike to me. Give spirit, I take all. <laughs> Lord, give me all. <laughs> so I was having a problem with it. So I know if you have a problem with it, you are just like me. Amen? So that is it. All right. The first thing to note here, just with something very simple, you will not have to figure out the answer next time. You come across something like this. Watch when the Spirit is capital S. It's always talking about the Holy Spirit. So if it's capital S, if it's small letter S, most likely it's talking about your human spirit. So with that alone, the seven spirit, is it capital S you see, did see there, or is it small letter S? It's capital S. So since it's capital S, it's talking about the Holy Ghost. So what is the seven spirit? Now this is the definition. The seven spirit is talking about the character of the Holy Spirit, the completeness of the Holy Spirit. If you do not see fear of God, that was not the Holy Spirit you encounter. Did somebody catch that? If you do not see the spirit of the Lord, Lordship, that was not the Holy Spirit. If you did not see wisdom, it's not not the Holy Spirit. If you do not see knowledge, it's not the Holy Spirit. If you do not see mind, 
It's not the Holy Spirit you're trying to. So it's the completeness of the Holy Spirit. All right? It's the completeness of the Holy Spirit. It's the behavior of the Holy Spirit. You see the fear of the Lord there. That's what they call a Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Did somebody catch that Holy Spirit? So the, 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 the fear of the Lord. So he carries that to a believer. That's why the Bible will say he will convict you when he's come. He will convict you of sin. Praise the Lord. Because he carries the fear of God. If it's something that will not carry the fear of God, it will not convict you like that. Did somebody catch it? So that is the way it works. So that seven spirits we've seen it, it was upon is the characteristic of the Holy Spirit. So when the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about healing, anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power, he anointed Jesus Christ with that seven spirit. And that's what you see in Revelation. All right? Extremely important. Now, but the two books you're going to notice, the seven spirit of the Lord is very clear uh, for us. You are going to be seeing it. Uh, it's even in the book, actually, even you see in uh, Revelation 1 and Revelation 3. You also see it in Revelation 5 when you see it being upon Jesus. All right. So take note of that. So that is the difference. Now, what is the nine gifts of the Spirit? Is that the characteristic of the Holy Spirit? No. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is not the characteristic of the Holy Spirit. It is the ability of the Holy Spirit given to a believer. Amen? Given to a believer. So when you are talking about nine gifts of the Spirit, you are talking about Holy Spirit himself. When you're talking about the nine, we're talking about the seven spirit of the Lord. We're talking about the Holy Spirit himself. This is the seven spirit of the Lord, of the Lord, Holy Spirit. Amen? When you're talking about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're talking about the, the, the way the Holy Spirit empowers a believer to go and carry out assignments. So he gives believers authority. He gives the believer working of miracles. You believe a healing ministry. He has the ability to give a believer that. Praise be to God. So that is just something we should note uh, in this season as we use it. Now somebody may ask, can this seven spirit of the Lord come upon a believer? And for what reason it should come upon a believer? It can come upon a believer. Amen. Because Jesus said, as my father has sent me, so I send you. Right? So if Jesus was sent out and Jesus have the seven spirit of the Lord, then we can have it because it's a greater work we will do. So we can have it in that uh, aspect. Praise be to God. All right. So we celebrate that. We give God all the praise and glory for that wonderful, 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 wonderful. So we've covered the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've covered the seven spirit of the Lord. We've also covered the five gifts of Jesus. Now that was from Jesus. Let's cover the fivefold ministry, which is also a gift of Jesus to his church. Is somebody catching that? The fivefold ministry is what? A gift of Jesus to his church. A gift from Jesus to his church. Now, we see all of this from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians 4, verse 11. Now, wh wh why is, what is important about this? I'm just going to, since all the fivefold ministry is in Ephesians 4, 11, I'm just going to uh, emphasize on points, all right? One, one point. Just giving you one, one point. Now, you say he gave some apostles. Now, who are apostles? Apostles are men called by God sent by God to establish and oversee oversees the work of the church and to break new territory by not so much by getting believers saved but by creating a structure for the church did somebody catch it now, but prophet, why did you add that part? I don't like that you add that part, not getting a believer saved. There's nothing wrong about apostle getting a believer saved. But that is really the, 
there's nothing wrong about a, an apostle getting an unbeliever saved. But that is not the work of an apostle. You see that? So sometimes when you do not know the work of an apostle, an apostle that really know his work, you will be saying, why is it that he do not do this part? That's not his part. He gave some. He can give you more than two or three. But his real duty of the apostle is one that is called. You can be called and not sent. You can be called and not sent by God. He can call you and keep you for 10 years before he send you. So everybody thinks because he has called you, he has sent you. It's a lie. He can call you. You'll be my apostle. Come and sit there in church every Sunday for 20 years. He said, why? He said, you are called now. He said, but are you sent? No. When you are sent, you have clarity. This is why sometimes those that are sent, you will see, they will not be quick to speak. They'll be waiting and praying, reading their Bible, waiting and praying, reading their Bible and worshiping until God now give them something. Sometimes you feel like they are too slow. Don't pressure them. They will give you something. You see that? Because they are taking their time to really make sure they hear from God. Did somebody catch it? So an apostle is somebody that is called by God sent by God, because who is sending way back? We will back the person up. So, who is sending will back it up. So, is somebody that is called by God, sent by God, to do what? To establish and oversees the church. And is known for breaking new ground. Sorry, apostles that are going to listen to this message. If you only have one church, you are not an apostle. Sorry. You are not an apostle now. You may have some of the apostle flavors. <laughs> you know, what, what is the apostle flavor? Leadership. You may be a great leader. We clap for you. You can't be president. But let's talk the truth. That's not an apostle now. Apostle break territories. Apostle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can't even claim apostle because you went to Miami to do your convention. Did somebody catch that? You can't claim an apostle. You just went to Miami to do your convention and come back and sit at home. That don't make you an apostle. An apostle, you want to go to like six cities to go and start and break new ground there. When are we going to Dallas? To, not for convention, for breaking of ground. If you can do that. Well, so some of you that are apostles today, maybe you were an apostle before. And it's not to mock you or laugh you. You were an apostle before. But you must be involved in trying. It doesn't matter if it's small grand. It's three people you gather in New York, three people you gather in Miami, three people you gather in. It doesn't matter how small. But you must be involved in breaking your ground. Not because you have problem in Miami, you go to New York and say you are breaking your apostle. No. Praise the Lord. People can have problems in one church and go to another and say it's an apostle, it's breaking ground. You're not breaking anything. You almost break, so you run. <laughs> you know? So that's not the apostle. Apostle must be called and sent by God to that territory. Did somebody catch it? So it's not just say, I think I'm going to, no, 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 no. Where is it any now? No. You must be called and sent to oversee the church. Praise the Lord. And then, now if you have some few pastors over you that are in different territory and we're in a world of internet and you are helping them through internet to grow ministry, fine. I know how many messages I prepare for people outside of the United States. Amen. Glory be to God. Yes, I'm like an apostle over there. Because it's to give them structure. Hallelujah. So an apostle is breaking new territory. He's telling you in this new territory, these are the things to do. These are the things to observe. This is how to take up. Uh, amen. And this is how to continue in grace. So don't just take the part of authority of apostle. Because the real duty of an apostle is breaking new territory. So when we, are we going to shine again? Breaking new territory, not so much. Okay, let, let me explain. An apostle, okay, now this is where many people make a mistake. An apostle, yes, can do a crusade and people will get saved.
But be very careful because that is not the duty of an apostle. I will really know you're an apostle if nobody gets saved and everybody got healed. I don't know if somebody got that. Nobody got saved, oh, but everybody got healed. Say how? Because an apostle is known for authority. They drive out demons. Amen? But their duty is not the elementary stage. The elementary stage is the evangelist. Evangelists go, but if you're an apostle, there's an evangelist perfect. Then, if you see those two gifts in a man, you will see him travel, get souls one, then he will not still exercise the authority. That means he's really an evangelist. If you meet real apostles that are evangelists, they will either tell you they are an evangelist, the real anointed one. Ask him, who are you really? He said, I'm really just an evangelist. Because if you have the evangelist, that's why you're going to see massive of soul winning. Because the evangelists bring good news. Is somebody catching something? The evangelist is known for good news and spreading the gospel to trust Jesus for everything. Apostle comes with authority. An evangelist comes with good news. There are things an evangelist may not be able to solve, even though he's preaching. But immediately he calls for soul to be saved. They will be coming like flies everywhere. You say, ah, wow, this is powerful. Somebody like Billy Graham. That was an evangelist. Major in Ghana. Yeah. So when you see somebody is in one place, just doing, maybe that's not his thing. So grace, my prayer is that God will not just render on the apostle, the apostle, but he will also add evangelism, an evangelist to it, so that he can operate in those two fields. All right. So you, at least you've seen the uh, evangelist what it's all about. Then what about the prophet? The prophet is one that hears from God. He's anointed to hear from God. An apostle may not hear from God. That is surprising people. An apostle may not hear from God. That's why you, some apostles now, they want to be a prophet. And they're having problem. Because you don't have that gift. You are not anointed to hear from God. You are anointed to go into territories. He may give you dream about a city. That don't mean you are in the office of the prophet. He have, and he have called you. You know he gives you a calling. Then he have sent you to go and change territories. Most of the time, what we do that is so wrong is that we just choose the gift that is raining or the one we like. Now, say, so prophet, can we do that? You can do that because the Bible says covet earnestly the best gift anyway. So you can do that. But the real apostles or the real prophet, they know what they are doing. So a prophet is anointed to hear from God. And a prophet is always in the spirit realm. Sometimes an apostle will be creating structure that he can live with the church as he leave and depart from there again. But a prophet is only thinking about what is the Spirit of God saying now? Helping. It is the prophet that helps the church to grow spiritually. The apostle is designed to help the, the church to have structure. Is somebody catching the play? They kind of intertwines, but you will not know this one is actually moving to another kind of gift. So just anointed to hear from God. What's God saying? Like when my friend Bishop is coming, Bishop Patrick, he said, Prophet, what's God saying? Because that's what they are doing. They are here to hear from God. All right, now the pastor. Pastor is all about care. Care. Good luck trying to get a a prophet to visit you at the hospital. Good luck. A prophet come to hospital to visit you. Except God sent him that day. Good luck. Good luck to get an apostle 
to come and see you in the hospital. That's why you're having problems with your pastor, <laughs> with your apostle. <laughs> because you don't know he's not a pastor. <laughs> he did not visit you. Because he's not a pastor. He's an apostle. He, while you are thinking about he should visit you, he's thinking about how he can open seven churches and give it to pastors to pastor careful. It is the pastors that take over the local church. Pastor is for the local church. Apostle is not for the local church. Apostle is for breaking territory. Prophet is really not for over the local church. Prophet is to hear from God what God is saying. Amen? Pastors are very good in babysitting. It's like God gives them special grace and anointing for babysitting people. Empathy, pastoral. An apostle don't care if you are vomiting. He will say you must vomit that blood that you ate yesterday in the night. Come out of him! <laughs> like, come <on> now! <laughs> Territorial commanders. They don't only command the people, they command the nation. They command cities. Why the prophet is hearing what is going on in the city? An apostle just wake up. He doesn't like the way he feels. He begins to say, oh, the devil's in this city. <laughs> I bind you. A prophet know where they are coming from, if it's on the left or from the right. <laughs> Sometimes you see prophet. Do you know we, the way we win some of our battles? God will tell us to change position. We know how to change that. Muscle. We, we, have you ever seen in the Bible where the Bible says apostle run? It's only prophets that run because you know where they are coming through. <laughs> where are you running? Have you been running before and you run into the enemy's hand? <laughs> they are coming from the left. You know, enter. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed here? Yeah. Are you getting blessed? Ah, you don't want that kind of trouble. So again, apostles are ter breaking territories. Yeah, that's who they are. New ground. Launching here, launching here, launching that kind of thing. Even though they call him bishop, he's still an apostle because he's launching more than one thing. The prophet is anointed to hear from the God, telling you what to hear the Lord. What's God saying concerning this? We have an apostle and a prophet because those are the two strong ones that God anchors everything on. We have somebody walking in those two dimensions. It's a dangerous dimension. It's dangerous. But sometimes the prophet want to always do the authority dimension, which is more the apostle. You see that the power of the prophet is to hear from God. Is to see. That's his real power. But the power of the apostle is not to see or hear from God. That's his limitation. Authority is his strength. That's why. And he must be stubborn. That's why he can go to new area. To open a city up. But all of them is backed up by God. Now can somebody have all of them? Yes. But you cannot say you have all of them and you are not doing the half evangelist. But with the half, the two I think you can have together, apostle and prophet, together. Authority and hearing from God. Maybe you can have those two. To not say you now have authority and pastor. Huh? How will you be driving at the demon? The person is vomiting at the same time you say, I care for you. <laughs> I don't know if it's flowing. <laughs> say, I care very much for you. You know? <laughs> Did somebody cut it? Apostles are the ones that go and drive the witches in the city before the pastor come. <laughs> Amen. Our God is a good God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? All right, our time is up. We were able to cover three major parts. We covered actually four things. We covered the aspect of the the gift of Jesus Christ to the church. We said it is salvation. We said it is the Holy Spirit. We said it is the word of God. We said it is uh, unity and fellowship. 
And we said also it is uh, love and grace. That was the first thing we covered. That's how the gift Jesus gave. It's a gift. It's a gift. Then we went into the seven spirit of the Lord, which is the completeness of the Holy Spirit and the character of the Holy Spirit. And we did go into the nine gift of the Holy Spirit um, for a deliver. And then we covered the nine gift, word of wisdom, uh, word of knowledge, faith, healing, diverse kinds of tongue, interpretation of tongue, working of miracles, and the rest of it. All right? So we covered that. Then after that, we now went into the aspect of now who is an apostle, the another five gift of God, of Jesus to the church, which is the fivefold ministry. Uh, we now covered the, from the book of Ephesians 4, 11, we covered the apostles, the territorial commanders. I kind of threw some stuff at you but during the teaching so that you can, it's not that one cannot have more than one gift. It's so that you can understand that some may even have the three gifts, but they want to stay within their gift sometimes. Mm. For example, you can see me expound on teaching and say, prophet is really good at teaching. Prophet is also a teacher. Amen. I may just be practicing a lot on teaching. Amen. <laughs> but that does not mean that's my gift. Watch what I will not even practice and I'm good at. Then you know my real gift. Did somebody type that? Uh -huh. <coughs> so then you say, wow, we didn't even practice that that much. You know? But the one I'm practicing, so if you're not very careful, you may not know a man's gift because the season you did meet him, he was doing something as practice, which is teaching. So he's teaching, teaching. Say, man, he's a good. Some people know me as just a good teacher. Some people know me as somebody that quotes over 100 scriptures to preach in those days. Some people know different, different things about me. But those who really, 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 really know me, you know, they know the prophetic about me. Because that is like flying, like a bird flying. It's very easy. Amen. If you can see, you can see. If you can't see, you can't see. Amen. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Mm. I see vision sometimes. I almost ask God, why are you showing me all of that? Amen. What I want to see, I don't want to see. I will just be seeing. Seeing is <laughs> just be seeing. Glory be to God. All right. So people pray to see. I don't pray to see. I see because I see. <laughs> Father. Father. Oh, Father. Hey, I'm, you, you may need some massage. You see, you see, I used to do it too. You see, when you do your neck like this, I did it from 16 to about 39 years old. One day I do it again, make crawl. Mm. <laughs> and I said, it's a father. Father. Have your neck hurt you before? You used to do it really fast. Father, father, hit them. And you know, when you shake your head like mountain of fire, when the neck hurt you after you've done that neck for over 20 something years, the thing has been burning, burning, burning. And now that day, I'm like, mm. you won't tell people that you just got hurt though, because you have to continue. The Lord is good. It's the neck that is holding down. So you are trying to manage yourself. They will not see you before you know you wrap up the service. Say so the power is moving. And the Lord said, be still. <laughs> it's your neck that needs to be still now because it's hurting you. <laughs> we've, done, we've been there, done that. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. It's when you have not been preaching for a long time, you don't have experience to talk about. When you've been preaching, you've seen some few things. God told you to start a healing ministry, uh, start a healing revival. A day before the, the service that you get sick. How can sick pray for sick? I say, God, should I cancel? God said, you go. He said, go with sickness. My body is shaking. He said, go. <laughs> there you go. Hallelujah. The truth of the matter is this. I said this and I close. You are not hearing from God except he's telling you to do something you cannot do. Okay, for example, he say heal the sick. Do you know you cannot do that? You cannot heal the sick, but he told you to heal the sick. You know what he really meant when he said heal the sick? It means comes to me. <laughs> but you did not hear. You went and really tried to heal the sick until you fail. I said, but God, why did you tell me to heal the sick? Heal the sick means come to me, all ye that are labor. <laughs> but you didn't hear 
come to me. You hear, he said I should go. You'll be sick. So you'll be healed today. Is that what he told you really? Because you know you cannot heal the sick. You should assess your power. You should be like Ezekiel. Do you believe this dry bone can live? I say, <laughs> do I believe? God, it's you that know if this dry bone can live. Because me, I don't know anything. You know. Don't know it. Don't know it. I say, okay, you know how to ask. Okay, now nah, I will tell you what to do. Professor. Imagine say yes. You say, okay, professor, on your own power. <laughs> is somebody cutting it? You have to get to a place where you are telling him you cannot do it by yourself. If you don't know that, you have not. You see, God, sometimes you think it's any, somebody breaking you. No, it's God that would break you. Till you get to your knees and cry out to him. God, what is this? Things will not work. Things will not move. Things will not flow. God, it is not you that brought me to this. It's him. It's him. Because until he breaks you, he cannot mold you. So that's the way it works. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. I'll tell you the truth. And we'll wrap it up now. The greatest thing you can do in the kingdom of God is prayers. I count myself not to have apprehended, but this is one thing I do. I forgot about the things that are behind. I press towards the mark of the high calling. I press. Remember you not the former things. Neither the things that are old. For behold, I will do a new thing. (laughs) If you think about the past, you get buried by the past. Remember, you know the former things, neither the things that are old. For behold, I will do a new thing. Now it springs forth, and you must know it. Some of you, you never knew that job was good until you get fired. Some of you never knew that marriage was good until you met your third or fourth one. Whatever you disrespect, you always disappear from your life. I've come to realize without no doubt in me that most people that are praying for marriages are not ready for it. Because they have in their head what they want. But that is movies. They really do have in their head. If you are a child of God and you have watched any drama movie that deals with relationship, that is what you think you should do. Because the spirit entered into me when the TV spoke to me. Ezekiel 2, 2, isn't it right? If you've read Romeo and Juliet, that's how you think it should be. I've never seen anybody not like the wedding. But I've always seen people that don't like the marriage. You think people are divorcing the wedding? They're divorcing the marriage. Is the marriage they are divorcing? They work. They... I don't know what is divorcing the... Because... The marriage is till death do you apart. The wedding is till we finish eating the cake. <laughs> is somebody getting blessed here? So it is hard work. It is what? Hard work. Why? You know, it's just because this, because that. I'll tell you why it's hard work when I close. It's hard work because you will try to control what you should never control. That's why it's hard work. You will try to control what you should never control. If you have a good marriage, it's not because you're a good person. Ooh, am, I, am I still recording? 
If you have a good marriage, it's not because you are a good person. Because it takes two to make it to be good. Say, so, oh, I have a good marriage. Ah. You thank God for your life, but also thank God for the other person's life that I've dealt with you. Because if it was good, it takes two to make it to be good. Just like it takes two to make it to be bad. It's my husband's fault. Even my pastor told me, the pastor lied to you. So for how you know I'm failing again in relationship. You are failing again because you are not praying again. <laughs> you are not praying again. You are daring and messing with something that only God can control. From the beginning, it was not so. He that made them, who made them? You know, made them male and female. And for this reason, cleaving will not happen. For what God have joined, not what your pastor joined. Oh, we got married 19, no, you did not. You actually get married. You say 1995? No. That one was for the church and for the court. You all actually got married in 2004. That was the day God appeared and now place his hand on me. So, but that was almost many years after. I know. That was the day. Because that was the day you cried and prayed to God, God, bless this marriage. can you say you marry according to God's will and a day before the marriage it was amen or the week of the marriage you went to your account and moved money to dangerous locations <laughs> to <laughs> dangerous locations the, the one that even the FBI will have a little problem to research before they find out that you went to you are living in America why is your money in Dubai and in Sweden uh, even Egypt, you put some there. <laughs> China, your money is there. <laughs> Dangerous locations. <laughs> you, you say there, you say, do you wed your lovely beloved wife that you love? Interesting. And you say you love, yes. You started with lies, you say, yes. Stand up on your feet and give him praise and glory. God will help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Say this after me, Lord Jesus, I receive your word. That which have come to me will stay with me. No devil in hell will be able to steal it in Jesus' mighty name. Talk to the Lord a little bit about how you want your work week to go as we invite Pastor Rashida.